Hi, my name's Bob Grenier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So I want to describe this experiment I would like to do. Whether we get to it, I don't know. Um, but we have these sources. They're all April 2021 or June 2021, so they're nice and fresh. And the idea is that if we can get um, uh, tungsten to fission, and uh, if we can get it to do what is a, was observed by Matsumoto and Leclerc, and uh, by um, Yul Brown and by our, ourselves in various experiments which is produce a lot of carbon uh, and uh, get to a situation where there may be this emission of this radiation that David Hudson saw that uh, caused glass to uh, crumble in his lab um, then we might be getting uh, cold neutrino condensates coming out and that they might interact with isotopes of strontium-90, yttrium-90 or cobalt-60 and force their uh, decay. So to do that, we need to know what the, sen the actual um, uh, the activity is of these samples. And for that, we have this alpha, beta, gamma detector here. So I'm going to live on this camera uh, show you a little bit about this alpha, beta, uh, gamma detector uh, and it's a very nice little Russian made device and that we're going to look at this and uh, with the sample so let's do that right now um, so I'll turn this on you hold the button down here for a period of time and it shows you something here uh, it's probably got the samples below so it could be quite active and uh, uh, if we look at the back here take this out of the way um, it has this little door on it and this is uh, this little plastic cover here is covering the pancake detector. It's a very nice detector in there. And this is for when you're doing calibration. So you have this on. And if you actually take this off, it's reversible. So this is, this is actually, you can buy this. It's very affordable. Uh, it's the Radioscan 701. And uh, you it's constantly updated. So it can run off rechargeable batteries and charge the batteries in there. And you can run it by USB and you can also capture your data using uh, the USB as well and keep logs of that. Um, and you can put normal batteries in here like I've got or rechargeable ones and set them to the type that's in there. Um, anyway, so the uh, pancake detector here, uh, you can see, uh, maybe maybe you can't, um, but there it is. Uh, it's a very nice uh, uh, Russian made tube here and so on, on the back of this uh, door you have one section that's got lead and that is for screening uh, alpha and beta so that you just see the gamma when you're looking for gamma so we're just gonna uh, give it a, uh, a go and I'll just you, you'll you'll see on here the inverse square fall off of, of radiation which is why um, uh, dilution is the solution to pollution or distances uh, I remember <laughs> someone asking Parkamov, aren't you worried about working near your reactors that produce strange radiation? He says, no, I'm, I have them in another room. <laughs> so uh, uh, distance is, is the key here. So, okay, so uh, what we've got here on the device, and you can, it's, it's an OLED screen, but uh, because of the uh, refresh of 60 hertz on my uh, video screen here you can see the actual refresh on the screen but when you're looking at it with your eyes you don't see that so anyway just, sorry, sorry for the the uh, sort of progressive scan there but you'll get the idea so um, if you put this on gamma we will need to have our cobalt 60 source and I'm actually going to turn the microphone on here and I've, I'm going to put this on to uh, gamma detection by putting this over here uh, obviously cobalt 60 is also a beta source so um, we just want to discriminate for the gamma. Okay, so there we have it. And uh, we're going to sum the gamma here. Now, I'm going to bring the Cobalt 60 source into view. And you'll probably see that uh, maybe it starts to go up in a bit. And, and we'll just uh, bring this down closer to it. So, you can see that... Uh, it obviously has a lot of activity. Let's move that in a better frame. So in terms of gamma, this is producing around about 18 microsieverts per hour. And you have different um, units you can choose. And I like the way that it says here, dangerous. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be living near a lot of this. Uh, but the actual source uh, for this um, 
uh, particular uh, source is, um, I think it's uh, uh, just uh, 0.5 of a microcurie and it's sealed. Okay, so as I pull this away, you'll see that the counts go down, but it's a, see, see how fast that goes down? So I got it over there. And it's still beeping because the average over a minute uh, is quite a good warning. Okay, so I've, I've turned that sampling off now. Okay, so we can actually go into the menu here and we can choose uh, to switch this over to beta. And uh, we'll choose that and go back. Okay, so now it's on beta. This is to do the background, but I want to do some counts. So uh, we're now going to remove the cover um, because we, we've done our background, let's say, and we're going to remove the cover and uh, see the pancake there and you can see again with this get uh, beta gamma source here as we move closer to it it will get a little bit more intense So again, if I move this away, you can see that the counts come down quite rapidly. And this is an average account there over a, a period of sampling time. So the average will be dropping. Okay. So uh, that is for our beta and gamma. And then we have uh, a straight beta source here. So I will uh, just go back onto that beta source there. Actually, if you didn't want to hear all this blipping noise, you can you can actually turn the speaker off, and then you just see the counts. But uh, it's in, it's indicative when you're doing experiments sometimes, and it's nice to have it in the background. Okay. So that is a beta source again. Watch the fall off. I'll zoom out, and you can see closer. So you can see it's an average, uh, but you can hear the clicking has massively dropped. Go back. You see that massive inverse square law. Okay, so let's have a look at the alpha source now. Uh, this is the polonium 210. And uh, what we do is we go into our menu. Uh, we stop our measuring rather. <laughs> and we go into our menu. And we go and select our alpha source. Okay, and we go to measuring now. So it's not seeing anything. Now, the interesting thing about the alpha source, it actually has, it's not sealed at the back. And that's because the alpha will be stopped by the plastic. So one side, you don't get to see any alpha. But this side, if you turn it over, um, you can get to see that like, as I move it down. And you might have noticed there, actually, that the the fall off was much quicker. And that's because the alpha is not going through the air uh, in the same way that the beta is. It's a much larger thing. It's, it's two neutrons, two protons. And, of course, uh, that gets stopped by the air. So you need very high energy alpha uh, to go through uh, a large amount of air. And, in fact, this alpha particle is... At 5.4 million electron volts, 5.4 mega electron volts. So it's it's quite uh, a high energy, uh, but it is um, not capable of traveling very far, as you can hear if you listen to the clicking. So it really doesn't travel far. Okay, so just to show you, if I turn this over and I put the even just the plastic on the back here, we'll see what the blippiness uh, is when we put it on there. Just extremely few getting through. 
right? And if we take this off and put it on the gamma uh, lead shield, it'll basically be nothing. Just odd random one from probably radon progeny in the environment. And that's why you need to do a background count. So for each of this alpha, beta, gamma, uh, we will do a background count. And then we will do for five minutes and then we will do a count using the relevant uh, cover or no cover for the particular radiation source. And that will provide our baseline. And because these isotopes, I mean, the, the, the polonium-210 has the shortest uh, uh, half-life of 100 and uh, 38 days, um, but they're all fairly fresh samples, and we'll be doing this within a day or two. Um, what I would like to see uh, then uh, is when we expose these so sources to either uh, the tungsten here with the uh, HHO, and if anything interesting happens there, or the tungsten with the iron and the aluminium, like we had uh, with uh, Yul Brown's uh, radiation remediation, uh, with these samples at a particular distance away, do we then find that the activity of the cobalt-60 and the strontium-90 go down uh, and that the polonium-210 stay, stays the same? Will there be a significant enough change in their activity in order that they would, um, uh, you know, be um, reduced in activity. And one thing we might consider doing is, is getting a parabolic pan lid like Parkamov did and putting it on the other side with as best as we can uh, determine the focal point of the, the cobalt 60 so that uh, any strange radiation coming out might be partially reflected and then collide back with the sample. Um, uh, to enhance its uh, decay. And the reason uh, why um, this would be a, an amazing experiment if it actually worked, and there's no guarantees, but you, the only way to guarantee failure is to not try, um, that is uh, because we could then use the Amasa gas uh, or HHO uh, not just to remediate the tritium-laced water at Fukushima. Uh, we would have uh, strong evidence uh, that David Hudson was correct and that just having radioactive material near the processing of the uh, the um, tritium water uh, could result in uh, re reduction in that uh, the waste uh, activity and so for instance you could have like soil <laughs> that is contaminated nearby or you could have maybe um, uh, some uh, solid material uh, from the reactor, reactor components uh, that are contaminated nearby, and maybe they would lose their decay, uh, lose their activity, or um, you could actually apply the gas directly to the material. And if it worked that we had some activity drop with just doing the tungsten first, then uh, you could have a scenario where you're not even having to mix it with anything. You just take the radioactive material, you impinge on a, on it with the Amasa gas or the HHO and the emissions that come from uh, the uh, whole process are able to stabilise the material directly. And that would be absolutely beautiful to see. So uh, there are the sort of an idea there. If you've got any thoughts, uh, it would be great to hear them. Um, uh, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.